Episode 147. Here to vocalize all intrusive thoughts, this is from Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram featuring Sean and Carlos, the show neither about shrooms nor about Skyrim. Those are just this the motherfucking parameters. This episode is brought to you by Sandbar, Coconut Grove, 3064 Grand Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33133, Home of the Fish Taco, Happy Hour, Monday to Friday, 3 to 7, Taco Tuesdays, Tacos Half Off, Sandbar, Coconut Grove. This episode also brought to you by The Last Carrot at 3133 Grand Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33133. They're open Monday through Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Family owned since 1975, your go-to place for <laughs> fresh, wholesome it. eats. The never, last carrot. Never that, never that, never that. You know what time it is. What's going on, Sean? How you feeling? You're kind of sick, right? Yeah, I feel like shit. I've also been like sick the most this past year that i've ever been in my life i don't know if that's like concern for me to go to an actual doctor be like hey maybe there's something happening hell it's about time gotta check the t-cells and the white cells and the blood cells and the plasma and the semen word (laughs) how about you I'm good, man. You know, you know, I just got back from the from motherfucking the, the VA, the, the mountains. You know what I'm saying? I was I was up in there. Heard you got in a little hiking accident right. by yourself, which is don't go hiking by yourself, guys. There's bears, wolves, tigers, mountain lions. They're like Sean. There's no tigers in America. Oh yeah, there is, bro. Have you watched Netflix recently? Tiger, What's, Tiger King. Oh, I mean that's that's not in the wild. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I mean. They're here though. You think a tiger? You think a fence is gonna hold back a tiger? Yeah, so, I mean so far it has. But. So so far, <laughs> so far. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. It was it was, it was good to get up there and uh, away from Miami. You know what I'm saying. It was. Uh, I love going up there, seeing my family, uh, especially seeing my grandma. My favorite person of all time. Yeah, man, Grandma loves crazy. Um, and then, like there, there was a there was a few weeks ago, right? That uh, there was a Rocky Rambo marathon on TV. I think it was on FX. <clears throat> I don't know if anyone caught that, but um, I think most people don't have cable anymore. Where well, I, I. I'm I'm behind the curve, but I have cable for the first time in my life, so I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever. I be I be D, DVR and shit, even though I could just stream it. I just DVR it anyways and fast forward through the commercials so I could feel like a boss. But uh, when I used to stay with my grandma's house in the summer, it was uh, when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? So I seen a Rocky movie on for the first time on TV, and I loved that shit. Yeah, it just hits different when it's like on spike. And, or and then it was uh you know, another time, I don't know if it was the same summer, a few weeks later, the next day, whatever, it was like Rocky playing all day. Like I was like, yo, there's there's five of these bitches. It blew <laughs> my adolescent mind. And what now there's eight? And and you know, my grandma, like she just reading her book, but like she was there with me watching it you know what i'm saying so that's like us like the rocky movies are like have a strong correlation with my grandma for me 
So even before I went up there, I was like, I was like, I was like pre gaming my time with my grandma when I was doing <laughs> the Rocky Marathon, and then after the Rocky Marathon, they had the Rambo Marathon, and my grandma watched that with me too. Well, you know, she was she wasn't really watching, but so I'm sitting there watching Rambo, you know, blow motherfuckers' heads off and shit, and yeah, it reminds me of my grandma. I've, I've actually I've actually met uh, Sly's daughters. They're super super nice people. I haven't met the man himself though. You said Sly's? Yeah, so Sylvester Stallone. Oh, that's like his nickname. Yeah, Sly. Mm. Even his daughters call him Sly. I didn't know that. Yeah, I love his story with his dog. How he sold his dog for like forty bucks and then bought it back. Oh yeah, to do the Rocky movie. I think I heard that somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I also caught a dope a dope show. I seen a. Uh, into the Spider Verse with a live orchestra and DJ. You, 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 you ever seen a movie like that? No, no. I mean, I've been in like plays and like live reenactments of things with a band, but it, it was it was dope. It was dope. Uh, for this movie in particular, like the DJ, I feel like did more work. Like the orchestra didn't go in until the end credits. You know what I'm saying? Like that's when they went in. But you you've seen like that movie really has more of a soundtrack than a score. I can see like an orchestra for like the original Sam Raimi. Yeah, like there there wasn't too many places <laughs> yeah, that yeah. you needed a cello. You know what I'm saying? Like Sunflower <laughs> Post Malone comes on. Like you 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 really need you know the the orchestra was chilling. No spotlight in the dark for a lot of it. But when it was time, like there were certain scenes that had you know the the strings and then like i said they really came alive during the end credits and like there was like a drum solo and everything like they got a standing ovation but the dj really carried that movie. did you get the dj's name dj danger oh shit <laughs> but yeah i've obviously you know dj danger and because we just watched recently across the spider verse and you know you've seen all the stuff on social media all the attention to detail that they put into that movie tying shit together. Oh, and then you see like, oh, you remember when uh, the colors behind Miles were purple and green, and then when he met the Spider Man in his universe, they turned red and blue. Yeah. So watching that movie back, I seen, you know, like I seen the moment when they hit Buddy with the bagel escaping. Yeah. And so like <laughs> that that was just fun to like uh, see all those moments, things you didn't even necessarily pay attention to the first time around. Now that the second movie came out. And yeah, like it, it's they did such a good job with those movies for them to be animated and be arguably the best Spider Man films there are. Yeah. When there's like fucking like six other live action films, and those are animated and they're arguably the best Spider Man films. Yeah. Have you ever heard like Quentin Tarantino's best movie list? Because there's like certain movies that hit every single criteria for a perfect film. Nah. <clears throat> well, like he was saying Back to the Future is one of them. But he gave it like a whole list, but I feel like when it comes to those two movies, there isn't a single part of it that isn't good. Actually great. The movies are fucking so good when it comes to like emotional aspects of it. <laughs> the action's crazy. Animation is insane, especially how they I remember the, the first time watching that movie. And the way it's animated, it makes you feel like the comic book came to life. It gives you also like a little bit of nostalgia. And I love it. And, you know, especially the work on the second movie they did, just um, each universe's uh, spider person yeah. universe getting animated and uh, color palleted a certain way. Um, it's just fucking phenomenal, and even even Spider Punk, they got to show how chaotic and anarchist he is. They got when I when I watch so many breakdowns that uh of them talking about how different pre- pieces of his clothing are animated at different frame rates. Yeah, shit's and just so much cool. And that's shit. because he's like an anarchist, and he doesn't stick to a frame rate. That's like that's another detail. Yeah. <clears throat> the fucking music for I mean. If it wasn't for the first movie, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have listened to Sunflower a million times. You, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I got the, even though 
there's not like a clear defined hit like Sunflower from the second movie than there is from the first movie. I actually have the the second movie soundtrack. Uh, Dude, the one track of Coyle Ray is amazing. Where it's so in the movie, it's when they go um, <clears throat> when Gwen Stacy goes to prom. And Peter turns into the lizard. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like reverbed in and out to where it sounds like it's in a, a cafeteria. That track is insane. I've listened to that one. Uh, mm. Am I Dreaming? Yeah. ASAP Rocky and um, and Colin with uh, Sway Lee, Nav, A Boogie with the Hoodie are my favorite tracks off the Across the Spider Verse soundtrack. Like, they're just a fucking vibe. One of my friends that's very critical on like superhero movies. I went to take him to watch the film because he's like, I don't know about watching another Spider-Man movie. I'm like, bro, but you've seen the last one they did with Miles. Like you have to see this one because I consider it one of the best superhero movies. Wait, but what does that mean? He's overly critical of superhero movies. Like he does. He didn't enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy 3. He walked out. He thought it was shitty. And I'm like, bro, that movie was pretty fucking good. It's not a perfect film. I wouldn't even say that it was great. I'd say that it's a good ass film. Um, there's a lot of movies he don't like that a lot of people really do like, but he said that that movie, from the beginning to the end, was fantastic. And so that's how you know it's like it's goaded. And I really, dude, the cliffhanger, like the ending of the movie. I remember I was oh thinking towards the God. ending. I'm like, how are they going to tie? Is there going to be like the main battle? With Yo, that's like an Infinity War level cliffhanger, right? Dude, there. I it was the first time in a theater in a long time that I was like, what the fuck? Like I looked around like, nah, they're playing like th there's going to be a fight scene in five minutes. But no, it was it. And it, I also I appreciate that. It's like sometimes like when I'm watching one of these shows, like, you know, like Ahsoka out right now and and shit is like building up to the climax of the episode and i'd be having to i'd be pausing it to see how much longer yeah <laughs> and then like when when some when there's like some juicy uh plot shit happening and i pause it and i got like 23 minutes left i'm like okay cool like they're not about to like just cut me off right now but when it's like five minutes left i'm like fuck this shit about to end right now this is some motherfucking bullshit <laughs> yeah it getting me hot <clears throat> Man, I still, dude, I, I need to watch Ahsoka mainly because my dog Anakin back in that hoe. Oh yeah, and I heard that episode. It's it's episode five, right? I I ain't got spoiler for you, bro. Not yet, not yet. Yeah, but bro, I'm kind of disappointed in Star Wars lately. Don't say that. Don't say I that. I have been. You don't even know what you're talking about, dude. I have been. You don't even know what you're talking about. You uninformed. Well, but I'm coming from like an unbiased. Yeah, I grew up with Star Wars a lot. I fucking love Star Wars. Prequels were the best, I think, out of everything. A lot of people disagree. But I also think that's because I grew up with those more. I mean, than me, the too, original me too. Three. Me too, I feel you. But, like, nothing has topped Revenge of the Sith. That's cat. I, I, that's what I feel. Rogue One, it, Rogue One came and, close. And sometimes it's not about topping, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, not everything's a competition. No, bro, but nothing's even come close. Bro, Rogue One, Andor. I didn't watch Andor. Bad so yeah. Batch season one and two. Bad Batch was dope. Motherfucking season seven of the Clone Wars. But that's different. We've been eating. It's, We've had Clone Wars since, like, what, 2002? You saying Star Wars been disappointing. You haven't even been <clears> checking for okay, it. Okay, I'm talking about, like, the Disney trilogy. The main films that should have been this fantastic. Shit, you, you talking about shit that happened years ago. We, we talking about right now. We I talking about over. right now. Also, Mandalorian season three left me underwhelmed. Boba Fett left me underwhelmed. Obi Wan, except for when he finally was face to face with Anakin. A lot of it's been like, just not hitting it. I'm not saying it's not That's good. Fair. That's fair. It's not. I'm saying it's it's good, but it hasn't like hit me like Star Wars used to hit me. I'd have like a mixture of like fear, curiosity, crazy shit whenever I'd watch Star Wars. And now I just watch it and I'm like, ugh. Yeah, it's cool. Doesn't give me that fear, bro. Like the first time I saw Boba Fett fall in the Sarlacc pit when I was a fucking kid, that couldn't get out of my mind for years. Dog, you know what's great about this camera angle? 
What? We're both out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal. Show them the camera angle. Oh, by the way, Carlos isn't here, guys. You haven't. I'm pretty sure they noticed. Or we could have just. <laughs> he's here. He's he's being quiet. I miss you, Carlos. Yeah, I miss you too, man. Bad fun. Yeah, let's get into this motherfucking news, man. Breaking news from shrooms to your living room. Oh man, that's uh, that's uh, I'm I'm gonna read this uh, this little bit of news tidbit. I don't know if you heard about this or not. Hear this cat. Senator Robert Menendez, New Jersey, and his wife were indicted yesterday on three counts of federal bribery charges related to alleged corruption. Wait, I think I think you say that with one syllable. You just say alleged. Or it's kind of like aluminum. You know aluminum. I mean? Aluminum. Uh, aluminum. <laughs> Uh, what is what is more than one aluminum? It's Illuminati. It's <laughs> Illuminati. Yeah, I didn't graduate either. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the government done fucked this up. All these hurricanes. All this sickness. <laughs> Yo, it's it's not what you said, it's how you said it. Yo, this cat's going ham. Do you hear him? Nah, I'm just ignoring him. <laughs> Senator Robert Menendez and his wife were indicted yesterday on three counts of federal bribery charges related to alleged corruption. The couple is accused. <laughs> This Yo, the shit. couple is accused. <laughs> couple is accused. Uh, he found it so amusing. Uh, Cause they be accusing. This couple, this couple, they accused. The alleged, couple is accused. Alleged. Allegedly. It don't matter no more. Uh, Cause they got accused for some shit they did like four years ago. Uh, was it four years, two years? I don't even know. It don't matter no more because they were accused. That's a bruise on your mind because I'm fuck. I'm accused. Allegedly on the ledge. I'm not joking like Heath Ledger. R.I.P. I did the makeup every Halloween. <laughs> and it still didn't look as good as you, doll. That's true. Damn, that was kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, them sleeping pill hit me in the face. Eyes real tiny like I got hit with maze. The couple is accused. They about to get tased. Cause the couple is accused. Can't see it in their face. Face. No trace. Except for what? Cash, gold, bars in the car? That's a big trace. I'm pretty sure they caught them in like two days. But you can't do this to me. Oh, I did it. <laughs> It ain't scripted. <clears throat> Bitch, I'm deadly and I'm scary like a cryptic. Crypt dick. It's blue. That's blue balls <laughs> when you can't fuck your chick. That's crip. Uh, my balls cripping. Two. <laughs> crip balls. Fuck blue face. You're an ass. All right. On the news. That's all blue face gets from us. What are you doing there, Matt? I got the explosion sound. Upon the replay, you know what I'm saying? You you, you can program the, the buttons uh, different ways. So it, it's like, it's like, stop. It's like you hit the button and it plays, you hit it again. You can loop, yeah. <clears throat> type shit. <laughs> this 
super delayed. Bro, it's like so much shit going on here. Bro, like, get back to the news. <laughs> you were reading it and then we just. <laughs> I'm going to get back to the news. Because I was like interested. Hey, I'm going to get back to the news <laughs> where the couple is accused. <clears throat> Of taking bribes in the forms of at least $480,000 in cash, at least $100,000 worth of gold bars, and a luxury vehicle in exchange for sharing sensitive U.S. government information, among other actions to influence foreign affairs on behalf of Egypt. Menendez, 69 years old, leads the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, but will need to step down from that role due to his felony charge. Three New Jersey businessmen tied to Menendez were also indicted. The latest charges come nearly six years after an unrelated criminal indictment against Menendez ended with a deadlocked jury in 2017. In the earlier case, which began in 2015, Menendez had faced charges for allegedly helping a Florida eye doctor deal with allegations of Medicare fraud in exchange for nearly $1 million worth of gift and campaign contributions. Menendez appears to be the first sitting U.S. Senator to have been indicted twice on unrelated criminal charges. He currently plans to seek a fourth term in the Senate next year. So, and the other thing I heard about that was, so they found, they found the gold bars and stuff. Like I'm talking about like up in the upholstery in, in the motherfucking, uh, the drywall, you know what I'm saying? Like wads of cash, like mob style, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate the hustle. I Uh, watched the Sopranos. Shrink rap. And he was like, he was like, nah, it's cause. It's because the way I came from, uh, like, Cuba, and I don't trust the banks. So, like, every week for the past 30 years, I've been taking out $10,000 in cash <laughs> and stashing it in the drywall. <laughs> and, you know, that's... But then they found... So he's accused of giving this information to, like, these Egyptian businessmen, right? They found the fingerprints of the Egyptians on the gold bars. <laughs> Oh, my God. So, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy part is, he not even stepping down. Right now, he's still up in the Senate. Senate you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised. It kind of reminds me of this dude in Miami. Uh, not Francisco Suarez, who's currently under investigation by the FBI. Um, but the, the mayor, uh, they found that motherfucker guilty of... All this shit, I uh, can't even get into it off the top of my head. And that motherfucker still right now here, mayoring in Miami. Yeah, I don't get it, bro. The audacity of these people. And we're all just sitting here fucking can't even pay for our light bills and shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuckers. And a couple is accused. Bro, the news just depresses me farther than depression has taken my body already and here's some more depressing news <laughs> student loan borrowers face a hot mess as the u.s braces for payments to restart I can't. <laughs> so after a three-year pause student loan repayments are restarting for 28 million americans uh okay Frustrated borrowers are dealing with incorrect bills, glitchy websites, and long hold times. Adding to the woes, because loan services like Navient quit the federal student loan biz during the pandemic, 40% of borrowers have a different servicer than when they last made a payment. Other servicers have a bigger workload with smaller staff, like Nelnet, which has eliminated 500 plus jobs this year. 
Some borrowers who signed up for the Biden admin's new save plan, designed to cut monthly payments in half, are actually seeing their payments increase from pre-pandemic. That's because the income-driven benefit doesn't go into effect until next July. The Federal Student Aid Office, which oversees loans, received $800 million less than what the Biden admin requested in this year's funding bill. While the three-year grace period was a financial boon for consumers and companies, pandemic savings have dwindled. Now student loan payments could pull $100 billion out of Americans' budget in the next year, with 56% of borrowers saying they'll be choosing between making repayments and buying necessities. That's concerning for roots retailers which rely on discretionary splurges. Student loans were mentioned 40 plus times in recent S&P 500 earning calls as the likes of Target, Walmart, and Best Buy warned they might feel the squeeze. Bro, <clears throat> shit. Well, it actually, I have a crazy story about student loans. When I went to a trade school after I got my GED. Well, I, I was just about to say, a, a, ain't you glad you dropped out? Like, well, well, here's the thing. What's crazy is... I didn't know you went to trade school. <clears throat> yeah, I went to SAE for audio engineering. Oh, okay, okay. Well, when you put it like that, like I, th I thought you learned how to weld. You were like, no. I, w I went to a trade school. Well, it's considered a trade school because they only give you like a certificate. You don't get like a diploma or anything like that. Word. But the, the, the total price for going there with the materials and everything that you received was 26000 I was 17 when I first got there. My mom didn't co-sign, so I couldn't sign until I was 18. So I did two months at the school, and then I realized, oh, now that I have all these materials, all they're showing us is YouTube videos. I can do this by myself. Fuck this. Like, I feel like it's a waste of time. And they were, like, minimizing my time in the studios because I basically went to school to go to the studio. Right. I didn't go to school to watch a YouTube video, and I'm not paying 26000 so the 26,000 in my mind was like, I'm going to sit in the studio all day, every day and just like hone my craft and be around engineers. So turned 18, I already finished two modules. We paid the material package and everything that was owed mm -hmm. from the two modules. And I left and I told the lady that I was going to sign. And I'm like, no, honestly, I'm not feeling this school. I got the materials we paid. It was like six grand for everything that we, we paid for. And then I didn't sign. Two, three years later, I get uh, a notice that I'm behind on my student loan payments, which I never signed for. I never got this money or this aid that I've, I'm I'm repaying. It's like ten grand, <laughs> and I see the paper and this fucking lady oh my forged God. my signature at SAE. No fucking way! Yeah. I look it up on the internet. This happens all the fucking time. At schools, trade schools, anywhere where they're doing financial aid, if they decide they wanted to, oh, you're still going to have student loans. And I didn't get the fucking money. So I'm basically paying the government for something I never received and already paid out of pocket when I was working at Five Guys <laughs> for the shit that I got. It's disgusting. So fuck... I'm not going to say fuck SAE because without SAE, I don't think I would have been on this audio journey. But what they did was fucking dirty, bro. Especially the situation I'm in now. I can barely, my FPL was due today. I can't pay it. I'm going to have to pay it in three, four days. Ho hopefully they don't shut my shit off. Hopefully I can receive government aid for that. But now I don't even want to go through the government for this shit. Because I think like 10 years down the line, they're going to fuck me over. I'm still waiting on my fucking tax return. See, it's <laughs> it's like it's like you know how like this this is what I'll say about uh like some of what like the current climate is with people's feelings. It, it's like there's some people that are like incredulous when people have certain reactions to certain things that, you know, in terms of you know the government or politics or whatever and it's like how could you even think that and it's not necessarily even due to the nature of that particular occurrence but it's because 
there's such like it's like the government itself and these uh administrations provide such fertile soil for there to be doubt in the first place they yeah. create such a negative sentiment against them that it becomes like very easy like it's very easy to 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 go into situations already biased because you've had such poor dealings with the current structure of things to begin with yeah that you know and bro you remember during the pandemic when me and my ex didn't receive any unemployment for like eight nine months well i never even got unemployment i was never able to get that shit and that that to me was like you're giving us no option to work but we don't we are not receiving any fucking help so i had to max out all my credit cards my credit now is in the 400s isn't that like as low as it could go basically poor and i never imagined my life taking this trajectory i still have a lot of hope cuz i have a lot of routes i can take and i feel like it could be a lot worse i look around at my apartment i'm like this is pretty fucking dope somehow all this is accumulated like i look at these speakers i remember walking into guitar center tripping balls on shrooms for a guitar strap and i paid 800 bucks i left instead of paying like 20 bucks for a strap i left with a strap and speakers and i could somehow do that back in the day now, like, going to fucking Chipotle, I can't even ask for extra chicken on my shit. Because it's almost 20 bucks for a bowl. Yo, the era of Chipotle has passed, too. <clears throat> I mean, I still I still eat Chipotle. I'm not going to lie. Every fucking day. But it's the $8 chicken bowl with extra rice, beans, all this shit that's free. With a free tortilla. Because that's I have the rewards. Mm. But that's about it. Shit ain't even good no more, though. It really isn't. It's bland. Doesn't taste like anything. Yeah, I'd be fucking with my stomach. Yeah, I like, feel like you have to build immunity towards it. Like, <laughs> like you've seen it consistently every single time after we finish the pod and we go get Chipotle. I feel bad afterwards. Yeah. It never makes me feel, oh, I ate. I feel good. I could do stuff now. It makes me feel like terrible. Well, I mean, imagine working at Chipotle. You're making nine fifty an hour or maybe 11 at the most. Nah, I heard they raise the minimum wage in Florida to 12. All right, still not enough to live. Especially if, like, at this one specific Chipotle, maybe they're not doing great numbers, so they have to cut back on labor. I mean, I don't think it's that one Chipotle. I think it's Chipotle across the board. It's just whack now. Yeah. I mean, they had that whole E. coli outbreak with the lettuce that one year that freaked everybody out. Remember oh, that? I remember that. I remember yeah. that. You got motherfuckers at Subway standing on bins of lettuce. Have you noticed that... What do you mean standing on base of lettuce? You don't remember that? No. I think it was a subway where this one dude was quitting and he wanted to make a video of him quitting, like, on his last shift. So he was just tossing everything on the ground, like, all the fucking tomatoes, lettuce, turkey, everything. And then he posted a picture of him with his work shoes, just standing in two bins of, like, fresh lettuce. <laughs> Late. <laughs> um... Yeah, you know, that, that's it for the motherfucking news, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, life, life's rough. We're all here, guys. No, no, no. What the fuck is going on? So you just quit vaping, right? Yeah, so I can go so to space now? So, uh, someone posted this on Instagram. <clears throat> I'm going to read it. I have a theory. I saw a TikTok today that said, if you have smoked cigarettes or vapes, you can't go to space because it'll crystallize in your lungs. Releasing vapes has been a complete setup because the government knew we were about to have the aliens come make themselves known, which we've all known since 1947. But now I feel like if you vape, you're not allowed to go to space because you won't survive and this planet is shit. And so we got to get the fuck up out of here. And now we're all doomed because we all vape, which is what the government wanted. They don't want us all going. 
hits vape with anxiety. Dog, the whole process of quitting this shit, it's disgusting. Like, there's no amount of smoking and the relief that it gives you to go through the withdrawal of it because, for example, at work, every little fucking thing made me irritable. Every corner I passed, I wanted to hit my vape. Everything I do tied into vaping. So, like, while I'm playing a video game, if I, the second I sit down to play, I want to hit. There's just constant moments of, like, Oh, I'm usually hitting something right now, which is crazy. Because it means you're barely breathing. Like, you're breathing air, it mostly. Is, is vaping more <clears throat> habit-forming than cigarettes? Definitely, because it's more accessible. Yeah, like, cigarettes is like a whole thing. Like, okay, like you got to go I'm, outside. You smell like shit. Yeah, a little lighter. You got, yeah. like, a whole set with the vape. It's in your pocket. It's right there. You're hitting it everywhere, anywhere. Well, it's also less nicotine. Yo, I would say vaping, you, you, you could say it's an epidemic. Oh, for sure, bro. Also, have you seen the elementary school, like, trash cans? There was one picture. It was like a fifth grade classroom where there was a trash can full of fucking vapes. Damn. Wow. That is... And I know in middle school they're vaping. High school, you're definitely vaping. Everyone vapes in high school. It's gross. I remember like 13 or 14 when they came out with like hookah pens or whatever the fuck. And that was the first vape and it was considered healthy compared to cigarettes because the whole reason was to get off cigarettes. Here's a vape with, with slightly less. Uh, it's, it's like that how it was marketed initially. Like, yeah, it, it was like the new al alternative. It was supposed to be the healthier version mm. that would, that you could then wean off a of nicotine by different percentages of nicotine. And then people are literally smoking fucking vegetable glycerin with zero milligrams of nicotine. Not asking the question, what am I putting in my lungs? Because it literally coats your lungs with like wet smoke instead of burning it. Hence the crystallization when no, you I hit the atmosphere. No, I definitely can see that because, yeah. Man. All right, so I was on Reddit, right? The Miami thread, okay? <clears throat> Here, here's the post. Tesla owners who can't charge at home, how do you get by? The subtitle or the body, whatever. I see tons of you, but I'm curious how you deal with it. Aren't you constantly needing to find a supercharger and pay prices that aren't really better than gas? Does it not drive you insane? <laughs> That's is that's the question posed. That's the query. Here's the response uh, by Mister Eight Bit X. Number one, drive to the charging spots in Dayland. Yeah, Mall. so this is specific to Miami. <clears throat> Number yeah yeah. Th this is in the the Miami oh, subreddit. Okay. He says one, drive to the charging spots in Dayland Mall. <laughs> Number two, take off your seatbelt and masturbate. <laughs> masturbate. No <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Take a 45-minute nap in your mess. <laughs> Number four, drive home. I really don't see your dilemma here. <laughs> this is what I also do. So then Kool-Aid Man Jug replied. He said, this is what I also do. Source, I drive a <laughs> Nissan Rogue. <laughs> he don't even need to charge up. He just go to he just go to charge his boss and masturbate. Have you also noticed that all electric cars look electric and they look like shit? I like how they look. I don't. I think they look boring. What happened to the girths of a woman? Yo, I just love when a Reddit post just on the most normal thing just fucking takes off like that. That makes me happy. Uh, things that don't make me happy. So, you know when you go to the motherfucking store and then you go to check out? And this is like pretty much every store. Some of them got, you know, slightly different variations of it. But they ask you. Did you find everything you needed? <laughs> I hate that shit. I'm going to tell you why. I think it's passive. Like, yeah, there's times when I remember I didn't find everything I needed. But what the fuck are you going to do about it? <laughs> You're the goddamn motherfucking cashier. You're not going to go get it. There's four people behind me. I'm not going to leave to go get it. Why are we even talking about this? Bro, they have code for everything. 
That's why walkie talkies are on, on every cash register. Take that out the motherfucking rapport. Just say, just have, just train them to say that. Uh, um, you know, uh, I hope I hope you had a, had a good had a good visit. Don't ask me if I found everything I'm looking for. Because what are you gonna do if I say no? At this point, I feel like if you're working at a job, right? right. Any any type of retail restaurant. Do we really need to follow the shit that we've been following for decades of like bullshit small talk? Like for that's just small talk to make someone. I don't know. It doesn't make I mean, you feel all, any better. All small talk is bullshit. Yeah. Like, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. But you're not always good. <laughs> no. But we not about to have that talk right now. So you just say I'm good. I, f- I feel like whenever someone asks me how are you doing, I usually say I'm straight, which isn't like I'm good or I'm bad. It's like yeah, life. I'm here. I'm breathing. <clears throat> you want? Can we react to that freestyle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you ready to do some motherfucking uh, reactions? Uh, wanna know where you at? Wanna know? Wanna get to watch the video? Man, that's just funny. Is it dumb? Is it stupid? No one's up. Trying to get a reaction from you, baby. What the fuck did I just watch? What did I just watch? All right, so this is a. Uh, well, that's not that's not a. Uh, the hell. Uh, it looks like we have some motherfucking uh, technical difficulties. Uh, let's let's do the handy take it out and put it back in technique no that's just funny it's cool always works all right we got we got audio <laughs> nope no audio <laughs> but they're going ham hey, boy Uh, Bluetooth. Did you connect the Bluetooth? The the Bluetooth is connected. Let's see. Let's see if I can figure out. All right, cause we did this before and we had audio. <clears throat> so why? You think cause you silenced your phone? It's up, man. It's up. Hmm. Let's see. We got... This shit worked last week. Seamlessly. Maybe if I turn Bluetooth off. No, nothing. Was the Bluetooth connected to the broadcaster? Yeah. Connected to the leg bone, connected to the hip bone. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Bluetooth back on. Bluetooth back on. You know, I, I don't. Maybe it's. Should the screen be mirroring? I don't think so because it's plugged in. But then when the screen's not mirrored, then we just get the screen. Now unplug it and plug it back in. We did this same, same exact shit last week <laughs> and it worked. Seamlessly. Dang. Looks like we have to do a test for it every single time now. I'm not bugging right. We didn't do anything special last I don't week. I think so. And the levels, the levels, man, is this, this kind of bummer because we had a lot of shit to react to. Yeah. 
and I can't think of. See, it's because it got the volume going through the dock connector. But going through that, there's no, that's not picking up any audio. So maybe. I wonder if I could add a, I could if I could add the ATEM as an audio source. I wonder. I wonder. Let's see. Um, oh, it's not even there. It is? Well, it's not picking anything up. What? Like Woody Harrelson. You ain't seen 10 bands in your life, shit. Reach for my neck. You'll get turned into example. Y'all got to stop playing with me. Clubs under the Great Pyramids. I pushed the camel through the eye of a needle. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. Tied the ops to the back of a track hawk and dragged them around you know, the block for 24 right hours. Motherfucker looked like a Resident Evil 5 However, campaign. We're not here to, in the headphones mm -hmm. yeah. because the headphones, anyways, because the headphones are going through the roadcaster. And we just ran that audio through the A But why would the Bluetooth okay, well, why why would the Bluetooth stop working? <clears throat> All right. Man, what a dilemma. Man, that was kind of a, nah. <laughs> it was it was a little embarrassing. It's cool though. It's cool. Yeah. But uh yeah, man, you know, you know how it is with this pod. It's it's motherfucking trial and error, baby. You know that you know that shit you were saying about uh SAE, like we did this self taught. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We we like from day one, from no. Bro, we have a fucking we have an iPhone on a tripod attached to a microphone stand. That's it's gangster. How, that's how we get down. Yeah. Yeah. And What's about video games? From day one, from day no, from day zero, self taught, figuring shit out. Um YouTube and shit, you know what I'm saying? Just how they do at SAE. <laughs> we used to YouTube shit. Oh, why isn't this facet of the operation working correctly? Why isn't the video coming through like that? How can we do this? Uh, how can we pair the audio and the video together seamlessly? The frame rate, uh, syncing up aperture. the audio and the video, the aperture, uh, triangles, triangulates, motherfucking uh, the correct cables to do certain things, hacks to get shit to work better, um, you know, increase the workflow, increase the productivity, the video editing, marketing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We we go to well, I guess you went to you know, like like we, we both have and I would say yours is significantly stronger, but that background of audio, uh, straight up audio. And um no no background of video from anyone involved. Yeah. And we just motherfucker figure shit out. And and you know, I get I get posed questions sometimes like uh like how the podcast doing. Um, people that I know the, the the thing the way I view the podcast is like is like if you ask me if the podcast is a success and that's like a very black and white question because the answer is a little bit more grayed out okay it's not like you know like you know like just 
to say it's a success, like, you know how they equate, okay, you know, there's, like, financially successful and then there's, like, happiness, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, like, levels to this shit. It's, like, has the podcast, uh, you know, gone viral and we got that deal, you know what I'm saying? We sold out, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, we haven't reached that level, but the thing about this podcast is, number one, okay, Doing this podcast, I have. Are you laughing? You just watching the camera, just focus, <laughs> uh, focus on me. Yeah, it's you know we deal with it and we keep it moving. Uh, <laughs> there, I'm back. I'm crispy. I'm out. I'm I'm gone. <laughs> There's people that I had never met before in my life. I had no personal connections to them that have found a podcast through just seeing it like through like mutuals maybe on social media and me and multiple people have become beyond acquaintances the actual friends IRL in real life from the podcast they didn't know me before and check out the podcast they seen the podcast and we subsequently became friends and they've been on the podcast that's cool as fuck yeah there's people that i have maintained uh online correspondence with through the podcast page that we get along and crack jokes in the DMs and they enjoy the post and the memes that I don't know those people. That's significant to me. There's two people, you and Hiram, that I was already friends with and we started a podcast and our working together has cemented our already good friendship into an incredible bond because the way things go in this life, I got so many people I'm so good friends with and from varying amount of years ago that just the way life goes, you don't see them, you know what I'm saying? That shit's wild. In the day-to-day. But y'all still cool, y'all still friends. Yeah, but it's, it's still wild to think of that, though. It's like... When Hiram was when Hiram was here, and now like with you're here, it's like doing when you do the podcast every week. Uh, it's like you know by default you have to go and do the podcast every week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And all there's other people. I don't. Maybe I see them every two months, just because that's the way I got time for it. But when we make time for the podcast, we inadvertently make time to hang out, spend time together. Yeah. And that wouldn't happen. Unless for the podcast. And that took me and Hiram's relationship to like this level of like fucking brotherhood. Like we have a bond similar to what he has with his like siblings that he grew up with. Yeah. And like that took our relationship to that level of like we have so much shit that like just goes without saying like because we know each other flow so well that like we already know shit just like psychically you know what i'm saying yeah thirdly carlos who's hiram's friend i never knew carlos before hiram brought carlos on as a guest carlos had so much fun with us doing the podcast he came back again and again as a guest I had known Carlos on three separate occasions, spent about roughly maybe four hours with him doing three different podcasts. Never spent any time with him outside of that. Had no background with him. He was Hiram's friend from a restaurant back in the day. Hiram was forced out of Miami by this goddamn real estate market. And he got, you know, all these motherfucking kids and shit. He had to make that decision to move out of Miami. And 
keep it at at that time you was that like that's when you was uh still heavy with doing studio shit yeah. and you still don't really have the time at that time and we had that talk and carlos officially like joined the podcast in an official capacity as the co-host and it was just me and carlos getting together at that time two times a week and i think i think i've talked about this like at least like once before like this is the person like i didn't know outside of the podcast like you know what i'm saying yeah like it's kind of it's kind of crazy when you think about it like we'd only met three times well like the closest i can compare to that is like whenever I grew up with one of my friends. I've known him since elementary. And then in middle school, he introduced me to one of his friends. And then by the, like, the next weekend, me and this other dude were hanging out, Dolo. And my other homie was like, yo, what the fuck is that? Like, (laughs) he was a little jealous. But that's the the closest I can compare to, like, instantly you click with somebody. It's like, oh, yo, we could fucking hang out. And then it's weird because you feel like you've known each other for fucking years. And it's just comfortable. Besides like men and male camaraderie, like when you actually find a boy that's your homie within the first two, three times of meeting him and you can like share information with and you could trust them. It, that's fucking valuable, bro. Yeah. So what you can, so going back to what you said about how, yes, this podcast and like, society's uh terms isn't successful because we don't have crazy finances crazy following but the little bit of impact we've had on ourselves is pretty substantial and and it's like i i feel like when you really look at these different sometimes intangible metrics like there's like a, a lot of a lot of different things that we've accomplished doing this where it, it's never felt to me like it's been a waste of time. And at, at, like, at like the very least, the bare minimum, is fun. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, just sitting over here like mashing buttons, cracking jokes, and doing shit on the computer. It's, it's never been like, even if uh, like when we, uh, like if we had to stop doing it, you know what I'm saying? which yeah. we almost did, it wouldn't be like a regret, like, damn, I wish I had never did that. That wow, shit was fun. It's like, as as long as, if, as, if, as far as it goes, it's, it's, it's good every single time. And, um, like, when it comes down to it, like, when you're building up that, uh, you know, like an audience for the show and it comes down to the people and, like, the these relationships that we've already fostered through doing the show is, like, substantial to me. And, like, the thing with Carlos to me is, like, just, like, really incredible. Like, Carlos is such a fucking cool dude. Like, that wouldn't have worked with someone else. Yeah. And, like, Carlos has, like, a, a temperament that is, like, few and, like, far between have it. Like, his just, t- like, tolerance for, yeah, like, pretty admirable, all, all of my fucking, uh, like, tardiness and everything he's had to put up with for me. And he just has such an amazing temperament and tolerance and he's just such a fucking wonderful person and he just brings so much to the table his fucking comedy bits and his fucking sheer musical talent and it's like for me it goes like what like what has and then we have a fucking amazing sponsors that uh sandbar and the last carrot brett and aaron that uh support us like that and like that like that's truly something like bro like the fact that we have two sponsors it's crazy and like our last video got like 37 <laughs> views on youtube you know what i'm saying it's crazy that's like it, it like really shows you that like that like people care you know what i'm saying and we have this uh amazing network of people and that's just really significant to me and it's like you know what i'm saying you gotta you you can't always dwell on like what you don't have and what you haven't got it yet you uh look around and appreciate what you have already and you'll probably find that it's actually quite substantial also think about whenever you hit that goal whatever goal it might be 
either wealth, fame, which I hope no one has an actual goal for fame. I think fame is just a byproduct of like pursuing something and honing a craft and being amazing at it and like networking and all that. But hopefully when you hit that goal, you realize like what I've had this entire time, friends, family, fucking a roof over my head, a pet, whatever it is. Like if you're not present and grateful for the normal life you have when you, when it, yeah, it kind of sucks. You're not living. Have you ever watched the movie Soul? No, it was that? It's with uh, Jamie oh yeah, Fox. With, with, yeah, with the little the little blue dude, yeah, yeah, the jazz movie. The whole movie, he's chasing this goal of being a jazz pianist for this one lady that he's like admired his whole life, and he's a band teacher, and he, like it goes through the whole film where he's very selfish in the sense that all he could think about is becoming the best musician for this one particular goal. For doing shows with this one lady he gets to the show after all the shit that he went through the whole film plays the show and he's like i thought i'd feel better like i finally reached my goal i thought i'd feel like more accomplished i thought it'd be like surreal and it wasn't and then it does a flashback to when his body was taken over by a different soul and she didn't so the whole thing was he was mentoring this one soul that didn't want to go to earth because she didn't care about living okay and then when she got to Earth, like, little things made her life better. A slice of pizza. Like, sitting down on a grate with, like, air coming through it in the middle of the street. Walking. And he would say, like, oh, yeah, you'd be the best walker ever, but whatever. That's not a purpose. A purpose is, like, music, movies, things that us in society consider something you can gain fame and wealth from. At the end, he's like, yeah. I'm going to just, I'm going to do some regular old living. And he just walks down the street, gets a slice of pizza. If you can't be grateful and present, your life is going to suck even when you get money. That's why Miley Cyrus says, <laughs> there's always going to be another mountain. Always going to want to make it move. move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes you got to have to lose. And about how fast I get there. And then, and then waiting on, on the, the other, other side. side. It's the climb. Oh, the fucking song is. It's the climb. Yo, I was I was gonna jump to the video games, but I feel like on like the the serious tone we are right now, like in real insightful. It tends to happen whenever it's me and you. I was gonna yeah like. <laughs> and Carlos be- is now like nightmare, 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 <laughs> nightmare dookie, dookie, fuck shit. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm gonna play this audio clip and uh, we can just talk about that real quick and then wrap it up. That sounds good, yeah. Does the audio work? And uh, it's gonna disappoint them. Let me just start it over. A lot of people that care about me, and uh, it's gonna disappoint them to, to you that I did this. Um, I would like to apologize to each and every one of them. Um, just a broken guy. Got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until now. Um, just, you know. Clock 4671. If you go too much further in that direction, I won't be able to hear you anymore. Alright, um, hey, by the guy, can this thing do a, uh, a backflip thing? I want to land it like uh, a safe, safe kind of banner. I think I'm going to try to do a barrel roll. And if that goes good, I'm just going to nose down and call the night. Bro, that whole. When that happened. Oh, so you actually remember that happening? Yeah, that was like 2019, right? Or 2018? I, I don't know. So uh, apparently, that, uh, the dude name is. Uh, Richard Russell, yeah, and yeah, so I I shared that uh, clip on my story, and you were actually the only person that that responded to it. Cause that shit, when I remember when it happened, it's such, bro, that's such an emotional moment. Because you could tell he felt happy in what he was doing, 
Like he felt like he broke routine for a second, even though it's super dangerous and he's going to die and he's going to commit suicide. He just did it out of like, I can't do this anymore. I can't fucking like Jim Carrey said, I can't play this character anymore. And, and he was even thinking about the other people. Yeah. Even, even in that moment. He was one of those. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. If you're, if you're suicidal for one, talk to somebody. But if you're suicidal and you feel like committing an act of homicide to take people down with you. Nah, that, that's, that's, that's fucked it, that, up. That's whack. Yeah. Like I forgot, one, one of my friend's dads used to say it. If you're going to kill yourself, don't kill anybody else. Kill yourself. Which is harsh, but. Yeah, nah, it's, it's like the way. So like apparently like with that story is he was a dude, he worked at the airport. Yeah. And he had like learned how to fly from the simulator. And he just took that plane out, and that's the audio from uh, him, you know, him talking to the air control uh, before he took it down. But it's just like the way he put things, you know what I'm saying? It just is like very. Mm-hmm. The fuck did you just rub on your gums? Uh, this is a nicotine pouch because we all have issues. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of like dip, you know, dip. Yo, can, can you uh can 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 you, can you break that up? I I never seen this shit before. So they're called Zins, and it's basically these little pouches. Okay, okay. You, you, you want you, you want you want to put the camera on that? So the people. Yeah, yeah. Zin. A zin, zin, zin. A zin, zin, zin. <laughs> Where is it gonna focus? Oh yeah, just go to me. Whatever. All right. So yeah, I did sponsor me. I need free naked. Actually, no. <laughs> I, hopefully, this is the last fucking one, and I can rid my body of something that isn't supposed to be there. Yo, sponsor me. I'll get on nicotine. I'll get <laughs> fuck. Pay me. I'll do. I'll do whatever the fuck. Wait, do you know Andrew Huberman? No. It's a podcast called the Huberman Podcast. He's like a neuroscientist. He discussed how some of the most famous philosophers, physicians, astrophysicists, they chew nicotine gum. Because it doesn't have carcinogens or anything like that, but nicotine acts as like a stimulant that also helps with memory and focus. Mm. And I could definitely see that. I'd be focused on E Boy or right? Hell. Yo, I'm about to get on that shit. Got a fucking life hack right there, boys. Uh, yeah, so normally we do a different song every episode, but uh, I, you know. I could send you one I made today. I, I was gonna play Stanley Steamers again. I'm not gonna lie. No, I got you here. Can I play Stanley Steamers? I'm, I'm playing it. Play I'm it. Playing. Fuck it. Can't stop me. I mean, you can. You, you pull, can pull, you, pull. You can send it to me, and I'll play that too. Yo, blast it's it. Just, blast it. This shit's just a fucking bomb. Got a diary all the way through the airplane. Yeah. 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 You think you think we should just we should just play that every single week? <laughs> no, are people no. gonna get tired of it? It's definitely gonna, yeah. It's catchy as hell. We'll, we'll make new ones every week. Don't worry. Boop, boop, boop. We'll make better ones. 
It'll just what, what about get different better. songs, but it's got the same hook? Poop, poop, poop. <laughs> just different verses. <laughs> I gotta finish this song with Tavion, bro. Bro, one thing I've noticed a lot of my songs from the past still relate to today. Yeah. I mean, you make good music. No denying that. I mean, five years from now, when I hear poop, 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 it's timeless. While you're on a plane, you accidentally poop some sprinkles in your pants. Yeah, imagine playing that <coughs> on speaker when you're on the plane, like if I was on the plane last week, and just singing, I'm not a terrorist. <laughs> 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 Big man, cake man.